Okay, so right now we're running into an issue. Set up with this second. Before we start this video and go all the way to the tuning and the dyno time, there's a couple things I want to do to this car before anything. So I want to change all these fluids out. I want to make sure that everything is good to go. Um, the the newest the newest gases in it, the best you know the best oil, the best transmission fluid, the best gear fluid, um, especially the transmission and diff fluid hasn't been changed in who knows how long. So. We're gonna do that first before we even get the car loaded on the trailer and head over to Paragon Performance and have Graham tune this thing. And I'm really, really excited to see what numbers this thing's gonna make. I have an idea, but leave a comment below if you think you know what numbers are gonna be. Just go ahead and put it below. I'm curious to see how close you guys get and I'm curious to see how close I get. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the oil. I kinda went ahead and double checked everything. Uh, I got all my stuff retorqued that was important to me. Anything that I would visually wanted to look at real quickly that's what all this little green marking is everywhere it's just a visual aid to see if the bolt has moved without actually you know going there and testing every single thing that kind of lets you know real quick that something has moved we're literally just less than 24 hours away from getting the car loaded up head out to iowa at like 4 a.m danny's gonna join me and i'm super excited to see what this track dog racing kit can do and how much ballast i'm probably gonna need because i weighed this thing i know how much it weighs Go at the end of the video, I'll tell you how much it weighs. Leave a comment below if you think you know how much this car weighs with me in it and a full tank of gas. Curious to see what you guys think as well. So let's get this oil changed. I wound up going with some renewable lubricants, motor oil, and then their diff oil. And for the transmission fluid, they do, uh, renewable lubricants does sell transmission, but I was hearing really good things about the GL6 for the Miata transmission. So we'll give this a try and if i don't really feel a difference between what's in there now and i can't really remember i think it's red line or something like that we're probably just going to wind up do renewable lubricants with everything um but for this purpose we're going to do this like i said i'm really excited to give these guys a try for nothing but great from them so um why not try some bio-based stuff considering we're in a disposable sport as it is why not try to help out and you know reuse the stuff especially when they have such an incredible formula so we're going to use a full five quarts for the oil, um, especially with the oil cooler and stuff like that. I've always kind of ran five quarts in it and get it going. oil change is done the trans and diff fluid are all done um and i got one thing i have to do tomorrow before i set this down but then it'll be loaded up and ready for dyno so stay tuned all right guys um it's super early and we're gonna start getting ready to head out i'm double checking everything before we leave uh making sure i have all my chargers and whatnot and recording equipment and then um yeah we'll be heading out I don't have coffee at the house, so we're gonna have to stop by a place to get coffee, which kind of sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. But, you can tell here, car's all loaded up. I'm excited to see what this thing makes. Oh, flashlight's on. Gross. We're only running around like four hours of sleep here, if that. Alright, we're at our first stop, which is not very far, but your boy needs some coffee and some food. We brought Danny along. I don't think I told you guys that, but Danny's here. I'm here. He was asleep, kind of, sort of, when I made the first video. So he's on for the ride, and uh, we're two hours away from seeing how much power this thing can make. I'm gonna go get some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some food now. Come 
chance to get the uh, old yachter. Make it to Palin. Got a real cute shout out to Graham for hooking us up. This is like the nicest dyno. Dude, I haven't taken a long trip like that in a while. It's, yeah, three hours or so. Definitely rare, definitely different occurrence. Oof. Felt forever. Yeah. So essentially, what George is doing right now is uh, because he's, we don't have anything to take the front bumper off, he brought ramps to back the truck up on to put the rear end of the truck at an angle like this so the trailer can angle down and we don't have to take the front bumper off when we're unloading his Miata um, because the trailer will be sitting at a higher incline. Um, pretty pretty smart working right there. I mean, could have wood blocks, but this is cooler looking. <laughs> Perfect. She takes a little while to wake up. Let you go in my yeah. I'm gonna let you go in that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man. Our tires aren't gonna be the best, but you know. Well, I'm fun. I'm, I'm excited to work with it. See what we can do. See what we can find out. I always get a kick out of doing stuff I don't normally do. ATI damp, which is why I was talking about the 7200 uh, RPM limit, because any higher than that, it'll overspin the. That makes the sense. Because I think the dampener was 144, and they originally had a 90 millimeter, and it would put it over some ridiculous spin. Yeah.
issue with uh, it's cutting really bad. So hopefully um, we pulled the plugs. Three and four look pretty wet and I'm really hoping that nothing's wrong. Um, if it is, you know, start from square run, but it was doing really good. So we will see. We'll definitely see how this goes. So I kind of came out here just to kind of give you guys an update on the situation. I think George did mention um, that they were having fuel cut issues. Well, we're not really, or they weren't really sure if it was fuel cut, if it was air or fuel that was cutting down, but essentially a cylinder was falling off because of that. So we were losing a lot of power while it was going through. But um, pretty much what they were discussing is that uh, they may believe that the injectors George has in there are a bit too small, which I, he said was were 550 C inject, CC injectors. So um, kind of crazy that injectors that large for a motor so tiny are, are maxing out. Uh, but it just might be what the supercharger is commanding. And because uh, it is maxing out, it's not getting the full fuel potential it needs. So, you know, it's kind of cutting. That's a little bit of an update what's going on. Uh, had some weird weird uh i guess extra moisture or something like that going on in the spark plug for cylinder three and four that was uh that was where we looked at the the guy who's tuning i can't remember his name <laughs> cleaned them off and then put them back in the car we're still kind of running into that same fuel cutting issue or that cylinder cut issue however you want to define that <laughs> The injectors are maxing out um, at one point at like 5,000 RPM. AFRs look great, but we were getting that fuel cut that you guys heard, um, or that cut, and it just, it seemed like the duty cycle was like spiked up. I'm gonna run a compression test all across the board, make sure everything is okay. Um, probably wind up upgrading the injectors, fuel rail, and do a standalone fuel pressure regulator. That way we can, you know, see what's going on with that stuff. It's part of building a process, part of building a car. So not upset about it. It's amazing. Uh, anybody come down to Paragon. I mean, honestly, Paragon performance in Iowa. It's been, that's by far the coolest experience I've ever had. Uh, their dyno rooms made. Everybody's great. And I just, I, I seriously can't thank them enough. And it's as much as it was sad to see, uh, not do it all the way. I think if I read that right, we were around 2.30, right? Was it? 2.30 yeah, and 2.15? 2.23 is what it came out okay. to. The, the first full pull. 2.23, so. bro. So two two twenty two and like two fifteen or two oh five uh, foot pounds, which is awesome. That's, that's, was foot pounds. There you go. Yeah. He's got it. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm not good with that stuff. So yeah, um, that's impressive. I'm obviously not going to tune into that, but that's some pretty damn good numbers. I'm excited to get this thing fixed up and redone, and just in general. So let's get on the road. Let's head back. Let's grab some food, and then we'll finish off at the casa. We are uh, 
back home, we're unloaded and everything, and I like, thought I'd just give a recap of kind of everything that went down and how it went, because mostly it's just a bunch of, you know, stationary dyno stuff. So the car overall did great. It drove really well. I mean, we were driving it up to about 100 miles per hour-ish, between 80 and 100, and kind of doing some mine pulls. AFRs were great. It didn't really, the timing was great. It, it, everything seemed to be going really well until we went to do a loaded watt pull. And when it hit about 5,000 RPM, as you heard in the video, it seemed to want to, it, it just stuttered. Um, the duty cycle maxed out over 100%. Pulled all the plugs, checked the plugs. The back two cylinders were a little bit wet, but they weren't anything too crazy looking. And we're almost pretty certain that the Dashworks uh, 550s we have can't put up with the demand that EA5 requires for this blow, uh, kit. Partially my fault, that's what I had laying around. Uh, should have done a little more research, but you know, you live, you learn and I'm not really upset about it. Nothing fell apart. So, I mean, we had the valve cover gas gets back, or the valve cover bolts back out a little bit, but everything else that I've checked so far is solid. Got a belt skipping issue, uh, which I'd, I'll sort that out here in a little bit. Everything was great, and uh, just, I, I really, really happy with the outcome. So, the solution that I have is we're gonna go with a set of uh, Dashworks 1000cc injectors, along with their 330 uh, pump, which has its own power source. Um, just to just to be on the safe side and we'll do that first see if it can clear the 5k hiccup if not we'll have to deep dive into something else like maybe coils um, maybe a, a separate coils which you know i plan on getting eventually but right now i'm trying to budget as much as possible i kind of spent a lot of money on this and it's to the point where i can't just keep doing this too much so i just got to be careful with it we're almost there everything is coming together pretty well and i'm pretty excited about it i honestly can't be able to wait to do the full watt tune on this because i think it's gonna be phenomenal and just way too much fun. The other thing we have uh, to consider is when I weighed this car, uh, I came in at 2330 with a full tank of gas and me in it. So you minus, you know, all that weight, you're still coming into like 3,300 something pounds. Uh, we're gonna need about 200 to 230 pounds of ballast in this car, which is ridiculous. But I wanna try it and see if it works. Hopefully we can somewhat manage uh, tire temperatures and possibly hopefully not anything else breaking. So with that ballast, we'll push it, put us around the 200-ish horsepower mark uh, that we require for the power to weight uh, in the class. And then from there, we can just develop the car further and further. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around, watching this dyno pool, watching the car attempt to do the full pool. If you guys are interested in anything I have on the car, I'm gonna leave all the stuff in the, in the comment section below. I'd like to give a huge shout out to everybody who's helped me, everybody who's put their hand in, in involved in this process because it really does mean a lot to me and you guys are incredible. Um, I'd love to see your guys' comments of what power you guys would have thought it made. Um, I have an idea of what it's gonna be, but I wanna know your guys' opinion of what horsepower this thing's gonna make with E85 in this blower. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for just everything. It's it's awesome. I'm glad that someone I'm glad there are people out there that are enjoying this hobby as much as I do because it's the most ridiculous thing ever. And why do we spend this much money on this stuff? I don't know. It makes me happy. It makes cool noises and I honestly can't wait to track that. And with that being said guys, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to see you at the track. Deuces.